What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Woody's Workshop. If you have a 2014 to 2018 BMW X5 or even a 328 diesel with the N47 or anything with an N47 or an N57 BMW diesel engine and it sounds like this. Then this video is for you. So today I'm going to be removing the engine out of this F15 X5 and I'm going to be replacing the timing chain, timing guides, uh, timing chain tensioner, and on this specific X5, due to the mileage, I'm also going to be uh, proactively replacing the rod bearings. Timing chains in these vehicles, in the N47 and the N57, are known to be problematic, uh, whether it's a failure of the chain itself or the tensioner just getting old and worn out and causing the chain to stretch. Um, it's definitely a known issue. Uh, if your vehicle sounds this way, you do want to proactively go ahead and get this timing chain service. You don't want to leave it, you don't want to keep running it and pushing your luck. If that chain breaks, you are going to be in a whole nother realm of repair costs. Um, yes, replacing the chain and the guides and the tensioner and all that is expensive, but let me tell you, it is much more expensive if you neglect it, allow the chain to break. At that point, you're going to damage the cylinder head, damage the valves, uh, it potentially need a completely new cylinder head and that's just a whole nother you know tier of repair costs so if your vehicle sounds this way you should address it as soon as possible so uh, with that being said let's get right into this So I got the engine out. I'm sure you saw I had to mess with the load leveler a little bit. Um, it is a very tight fit between the radiator and this rear cowling, unless you were to take off that cowling and all the wipers. Uh, it, it just has to be almost, almost completely level to get it, just pull it straight out and forwards. Um, you can see I did leave my transmission in place. I've got a floor jack under there supporting it. I was able to keep the torque converter in place. I did have to take off the driver side motor mount bracket. As I was taking it out, I just removed it because I needed a little bit more clearance for some of the stuff over here. It was kind of snagging on that motor mount, so uh, I did do, undo that. Like I showed earlier, I was able to leave the AC in the car, so I didn't have to mess with evac and recharge or anything like that. So at this point, I am ready to drain the oil and mount this thing up on the stand. So I, I'm not going to be mounting this on the stand in the traditional way by the rear, uh, just because I am going to be working primarily here taking off the rear timing cover to get to the rear mounted chain so uh with that said it's going to be a little bit uh non-conventional i guess you'd say Ouch. 
Ooh wee. So, do not pull on the flywheel. The flywheel is super fucking sharp. Whew. All right, so just a tip. Don't pull on the flywheel. The flywheel has like a razor sharp edge on the inside of it and I just made the mistake of grabbing it to pull the engine over here to my workspace and I sliced my finger wide open so that kind of sucks. So I've got the engine on the stand. Uh, this is probably a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. Um, I've got the engine mounted on the side of the block so this is the passenger side of the block. I removed the passenger side motor mount bracket and I secure the uh, engine stand adapter to where the bracket used to mount. Uh, I do this because I'm gonna be doing the majority of my work here on the rear of the engine. I've gotta take the rear timing cover off, all this stuff, and I don't wanna be working around that engine stand. So it, it definitely makes it more convenient. It's a little bit awkward when you go to turn the engine around, but that's a small price to pay in my eyes uh, for the, uh, you know, the ease of not having anything in your way when you're trying to do the timing chain. So, um, I'm going to start on top, start pulling off the valve cover. Unfortunately, on the N57, you have these fuel feed lines that come from the high pressure fuel pump under the intake, and the lines run under the intake up to the fuel rail, and they overlap the valve cover. So unfortunately, you have to pull the intake manifold off in order to get these lines out of the way to then be able to raise the uh, valve cover off the engine. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start tearing into the valve cover now. Now that I have my oil pan off and the engine flipped back around, I'm ready to take off my uh, rear timing cover. There's going to be a number of uh, E8s on the face of the cover. There's a couple E10s that go down through the cover itself. Uh, you also need to remove your crankshaft position sensor. It's a 4mm Allen, slides right out. Um, the uh, pickup ring that sits over the crankshaft, you want to be real careful with that. Make sure you don't nick it or damage it in any way. Um, you don't have to worry about this uh, service cap for your uh, high pressure fuel pump sprocket. Uh, since we're pulling everything off, we don't need to fuss with this in any way. That's for uh, in vehicle service of the high pressure fuel pump. So we're not going to be touching that. So I'm ready to start undoing this uh, rear timing cover.
Now that I have my rear timing cover off, you can fully see all the chains and guides and tensioners and see what's really going on in here. Um, on this particular engine, uh, this chain here from the crankshaft to the high pressure fuel pump sprocket, is it's a little bit stretched, but this chain up here is significantly stretched. You can see how much play is in that. Um, if I were to turn the crankshaft, there's probably 30 degrees of, uh, uh, you know, of crankshaft rotation before the camshafts are even turned. That's how sloppy this chain is. So I will be replacing all these chains, guides, and tensioners. Uh, I'm going to cut this video off here just to keep it somewhat short. And uh, my next video I'll be showing you in detail how to replace the chains, guides, tensioners, everything, time the engine, do all that entire service. Uh, in a little more detail. So if that sounds interesting to you or you're in the process of doing this and you're looking for a good tutorial, please consider subscribing to the channel and checking out my next video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.